at the time, people did not quite understand, you know, Africa. Um, and maybe they did not educate themselves. Uh, or maybe also they get this uh, cliche from uh, yeah. the mainstream media what Africa is. Right. I did also feel like a part of my responsibility was kind of to, quote in a quote, educate uh, some of the people about uh, what is not being told on the mainstream media or on, on what they, they have heard you know, here or there. Yeah. And that that part really resonated with me, how you talked about the hurt that you felt from realizing that Africa had been reduced to a series of cliches by the media. And you say, oh, I didn't know that this is what you thought of when you thought of Africa. You thought of the Serengeti, some lions and extreme poverty and a, a failed continent, basically. And you say there's so much more to it than that. Uh, that really hit home for me when you mentioned that, because as an international person, you are kind of caught between these two worlds. And I'm sure that you still feel this every single day. And you also talk about how a lot of the former Fulbright scholars, they return home to Brazzaville in the Republic of the Congo, and they don't quite know what to do with themselves because they miss home and they miss aspects of their family and friends back in Africa, but they also have gotten accustomed to this weird U.S. way of life. And mm -hmm. there is this kind of ping ponging of, you know, what's my identity now? Who am I now yeah. that I have yeah. gone through this? And obviously, as we're speaking now, you're still in the United States. You did go back, but then you came back to complete even further education. So where do you feel it is your place in the international community after all of this? Do you feel I want to go and stay in America as long as possible? Or do you want to take the knowledge that you have learned and become entrepreneurial and build more programs back home. How do you see that now after so many years? Well, um, uh, that's, that's again a very good question. Sometimes are probably tough. Uh, but I would say in my book, I, I mentioned this, this quote uh, from, an, Amer from uh, an African thinker, uh, Francis Fennon. He wants to say it, each generation, I quote, must discover its mission out of relative opacity, either to fulfill it or to betray it. So to your question, I think I am kind of on the mission of discovering my mission on this earth. Same. And probably back home, uh, because I think uh, back home there are quite a lot to do. Uh, there are okay, villages that do not have uh, cleaning water. Um, there are a lot of young people who survived the civil war, uh, do not have economic opportunities, um, and they don't have access to educational okay, opportunities as well. So, you know, to me, I am trying to find a bridge between America and home. What I have learned here, not only in terms of knowledge, but also in terms of a capital, how it can be invested back home to help those who cannot have the same opportunities that I have. And I did it, you know, when I went back home after Fulbright Fellowship. And actually, I am trying to, to raise uh, money uh, because I would love to um, establish uh, an innovation center in my town to help young people who survived the Civil War create startups in agriculture and food productions. Uh, so that's a kind of the my, my next project, but it, it um, it's kind of requiring a, a, um, something like a fifty you know thousand yeah. dollars. Um, so I, I don't know if I have I have answered your your question, and uh, but as I said, uh, I think I am on a mission on you know of discovering my you know my uh, uh, my mission on 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 this earth. You know, and, and and part of it is doing what I am doing, is getting my PhD, is is publishing my book, um, and is, is owning my story. And because a part of, of course, uh, uh, being a human being is, uh, um, uh, is is to be able to to appreciate, to understand, 
how a story and how how a story can inform others and how we can build uh, something beautiful out of how a story. I, I love that. And this book really reminded me of a lot of things that I have dots that I've connected on the show and in my own life that other times people who are on the outside, they don't necessarily understand how those dots are connected. Like, what does the climate and climate change and human rights and entrepreneurship, these all seem like different things. But then when you read a story like this, you understand, oh, there is a reason that I, as an individual, me, Ross, gravitate towards these types of stories. And there, there is an underlying connection. And that was really illustrated by the point after you finish your first study, you're, you're, the Fulbright is done, you're going back to Brazzaville, and everybody around you is saying, hey, there's no jobs. A lot of the Fulbright scholars that have returned, they can't find work. The government isn't offering jobs. You're not prepared for this. It's not a good economy for making money. And the first thing that you say is, I don't want a job. I'm not here for a job. I was like, huh? What do you mean you don't want a job? Even your dad is shocked by this. But you say, no, I want to take my skills and I want entrepreneurship is a vehicle for me to create something in my hometown and you never considered getting a job. So it's like entrepreneurship at its best can be this incredible vehicle for empowerment and for building and for creating, especially in communities that have been struggling for external factors such as the Republic of the Congo. So um, that really connected a lot of dots for me. How do you feel about entrepreneurship as it relates to human rights now, uh, of course, I, I think uh, you're right. I think entrepreneurship is a you, you know human rights. So entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship, excuse me, is uh, uh, is a best way to create prosperity uh, for people. And um, and 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 then the, the good thing, as you were talking about uh, me, um, you know, going back home and uh, did not want to get a job is probably because of America too. Uh, I have studied it in a French education system. And mostly the way that it is, um, uh, it is wired or designed uh, is to uh, educate the students, uh, they get the degree and they go to find a job, okay? Uh, but one of the things that I have found very interesting in American education Though that you may not become an entrepreneur, uh, but uh, you can and you, you have to be a leader okay, in your field. So you have to be creative in what you do. So that's something very interesting that I have found in American education. So it, it, it teaches you to become an entrepreneur, not only in the sense of uh, creating startups, but in the sense of thinking out of the box, how you can improve what you are doing, how you can become a leader, okay, mm. um, in your field. And um, and that's the reason why when I went back home, I, I told myself, listen, I don't want to get a job, no matter what it will, you know, take me, but, you know, I, I want to do, you know, something. And, um, and, and you know, uh, and, to, and also, this country is is a land of full of uh, entrepreneurial stories. You know, I talked about uh, you know Bill Gates, you know Michael Zuckerberg, uh, small businesses. Uh, you know, you know some of the, the quotes: the, the the sky is the limit. You know, you you can you can make it no matter what. Uh, so I I, I I was and I am still very fascinated, uh, you know, by America, what uh, what it has done to me, um, and personally speaking, and 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 and, and, and that's, uh, you know, the, the beauty of education. The beauty of education is uh, to be able to solve problems that you face or are facing in your life. Education is not just the the institution. Education is not just uh, the, the building, but it's the process of through which someone can empower himself or herself. And yeah. I think America has been um, a part of a, a key element for me uh, on that front. Yeah.